There we go. We're recording. I'm here with Leah Rupp and we love to do these little astrology chats. And then of course I always bring in the human design elements because I'm learning a lot about my, my energy type and all the stuff. So, and we just finished a course that Leah was running. So I brought her on here again to talk about kind of what's going on in the, the universe lately. And I've been feeling some big shifts in myself. So I'm excited to talk to her about some of that stuff. Um, Leah, do you want to say anything more about your your introduction? Ooh, no. <laughs> yeah, let's see. <laughs> what do I want to say? Yeah, I love our work. I love the progression of our work together and how we've been doing this for, I don't know how long, but. Like yeah, looking. we're both um, Pure Joy certified coaches. That's how we yeah. met. I forgot about that part. So. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing lots of different things together. Yeah. And <laughs> looking at looking at the energy overall and then we've been looking at your charts and your families and yes. And yeah, fun. and in my program Home in the Home, you know, we start in that program, you know, mm -hmm. looking at your own chart and then each of your family members, right? And we yeah. and we see how like relationships can work together. So mm -hmm. I love that. That's part of the program there um yeah. for people to find that in the in the membership yeah, yeah I've forgotten all the things we've done together so um, I know yeah and I contacted you this time because there's a new moon coming up yeah July 17th I think it is and there's like a, a shift that I heard about in like the node, the south node, the north node. And I'm feeling like a big change in my life from one area into the next. And um, talking a, a lot about like homeschool. Yeah. And public school. I think I've gone over this in our, in our talks over the last couple of years. And so there's a huge shift that I'm now feeling from my homework it out into the like wider community as far as like schooling goes so yeah. I'm curious to see what it says in my chart about that kind of thing see what <clears throat> see what what's up for you right now yeah and also last time we talked we were talking a lot about the masculine and feminine energies which yeah. I've felt those themes as well like just noticing them in myself and my beliefs, like challenging my own beliefs too yeah. in the last few months of what that, what those mean for me. And mm -hmm. I think that maybe, I don't know what the astrology says, but I feel like I was in a really big long-term feminine kind of flow and mm -hmm. more of like um just figuring it out as I go and I'm shifting more into I need more structure which feels more masculine wow so I don't know if that's shows up um in the astrology charts right now but you know one thing that'd be fun to do sometime you can tell me we could do it this time or another time is <clears throat> to look at your excuse me progress chart mm. um and the progressed chart shows kind of like the progression over your lifetime so there's like a progress sun and a progress moon and it moves all the way around the wheel and it can show like what <clears throat> and what stage of life you're in what energy you're working with and so sometimes when 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 you have shifts in your progress chart then you really feel like you're entering a new era so that would be cool to check out sometime yeah that's funny you say that because i i was listening to someone recently um this week talking about the progress moon chart and I was like that's something I still haven't done so that would be that I am curious about that yeah that would be fun to do are you needing something for you yeah um it's World Tuesday with Jacka but you're using your computer oh yeah so that's fine it's okay your phone. we're actually recording so I'm gonna let you and daddy figure that out but there's something else you can use that if you'd like what you can use my that's phone that's what I'm saying okay it's sure wrong. Here you go. Yep, we're just recording right now. So, okay. See you later. <laughs> I might have I might have a little a cat 
come and interrupt us because I'm in a new space. We'll have some real life, have some real life stuff going on. <laughs> real life moms. Yeah, I, I left the house to do this. So I may have some interruptions, but we'll see. That's smart. Did you go to an office? Yeah, yeah. I'm in the close, uh, close by office, but they can get here. I locked the door though. <laughs> <laughs> they can get here they were here right before I got on the call yeah we'll see we'll see if there'll be some interruptions normal life normalize real life real moms working Mm yeah that's what it's all about Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah whatever you're feeling like um you want to dive into I know Um, well, let's talk about the nodes a little bit because I do think that that is a big, a big shift um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. that we're all going to be going through, and then we can look at your chart, okay, and see what's going on there. So, um, but I'll explain a little bit about the nodes. So, the nodes are a little bit different <clears throat> in astrology, and I'll show everyone them in um, your chart, and so that people can see the symbols. <clears throat> you can find the North Node in your chart. Um, they're a little bit different than the other placements in the chart in that they're just a fixed position in the sky. <clears throat> so there's not actually like a celestial body there. They're just a position in the sky. Um, and But there's a lot of energetic themes surrounding them. Um, and <clears throat> they move retrograde. They move opposite to the other bodies in the sky that are usually moving direct. And then we talk about the planets will move retrograde and then forwards, but the nodes are always moving in the other direction. Um, in this case, <clears throat> so in this case, the nodes are are going from um, Taurus to Aries <clears throat> and from Scorpio to Libra. So that's why they're moving backwards. Normally we go the other direction. Um, and they move signs every 18 months and it's pretty mm-hmm. significant <clears throat> when they do. And we we, I would imagine that we're already feeling it a little bit and that as we get closer to the 17th that we'll really feel um the background like i like to call it the background frequency that's like a term borrowed from human design that it's like um the background frequency that we're living in is the energy that the planets are bringing in <clears throat> to earth and um yeah, when the notes change, the background frequency changes. Now, like what the North and South node represent <clears throat> are kind of two points of destiny. Um, so in a natal chart, which we'll look at them again in yours, like wherever your North and South node are natally, those are significant points for you. What we're talking about right now, though, is where they just are in the sky right now for everyone. <clears throat> so so it's like as... as um, collectively for all of humanity there are these two points of destiny that we're working with right now or and when i say destiny i mean like um <clears throat> an energy that is transformative and influential that is like that is leading us and and um impacting us um and the north node has to do with like it's like a seeking or going toward um and then the south node is like releasing so the north node has an abundance of moving towards the south node has like a lot of like working out resolving and letting go so what the north node is is what we're we're like like learning moving into feeling out feeling around finding out about um and what the south node is is where we've already been we're clearing out, we're letting go, we're transforming. So in a person's natal chart, the north and south node can be used as kind of like these guiding lights to notice what you're ready to release in this lifetime, what you're ready to move towards, and you have energy to go towards in this lifetime. And they're really like, I feel like compass points almost for a human. I use them a lot in a chart. If if a person is struggling and I don't know like which way they're headed, and I look at the node and it's really, really informative for overall, like what this soul's mission is on this planet. And so <clears throat> right now we've been in <laughs> 18 months of Taurus and Scorpio and that's fixed energy. 
So there are like so many different cycles in astrology. One of them is the way that we cycle through the seasons in this pattern of three. So we go, there are different types of energy, like flavors of energy, mutable, fixed, and cardinal. Mutable means it has movement and flow and it absorbs and it takes in and it's changeable. And then fixed means it stays and anchors. And then cardinal means now we're ready to go and move forward. And we cycle through those in threes over and over and over again. So <clears throat> an example of that, um, yeah, is like in the summer season right now, <laughs> we're in Cancer, which is a cardinal sign. Next, um, we're going to move into Leo, which is a fixed sign. Um, and then Virgo, which is a mutable sign. And then we start over. So we go through <clears throat> these cycles. Um, yeah, so, but in the summer, like, well, okay, that was a little bit confusing. Let's say in the, like the summer itself, we're in cancer season right now, which is cardinal energy. And that means that like, we are ready to initiate and move forward with whatever is happening. So we're moving from fixed energy, which is like an anchor point. We were in Taurus and Scorpio and those fixed signs. Let me see if I can turn off that beeping. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> those fixed signs are, have been telling us to stay put and to look at something very important. And what they're, what they've been asking us to look at are the themes of Taurus and Scorpio. Um, and that would be like the body, sexuality, the material world, the earth, like these are the themes that we're working with. Um, and so we've been like, I think if you look past in the past 18 months, you can really see power dynamics. So Scorpio being <clears throat> down here in the South node, we've been releasing like power dynamics, sexuality, the secrets, like what has been under the radar for so long and we're moving towards like embodiment <clears throat> health body image things about money you can see um a big financial theme i think in the last 18 months overall in the world and like redistribution of resources and i'm not painting any of it in love and light because there's like shadowy expressions of it and there's like really amazing ways that it's come forth. It's got the full, you know, because humanity has the full spectrum, we're gonna get the full spectrum of expression on these energies. So we've been in a time where we're looking at bodies, we're looking at money, we're looking at resources, we're looking at land, the earth. <clears throat> um, and then down at the bottom, sexual power dynamics, sexuality, secrets, <clears throat> spirituality, transformation. Um, and releasing whatever was a secret that needed to be let go of and releasing meaning kind of like bringing it up. So that's where we've been. And now we're going to move into Aries and Libra, which is a little bit more like move forward energy. And it's like, now we've looked at what the fixed signs wanted us to look at. And now it's time to move forward into a new phase. So if everyone's feeling that, I've talked to a few people over the last few days in my sessions that are like, I feel something coming. I feel, I feel it's coming. And this, this is probably going to provide the energy for everyone in a unique way to move forward into whatever's been brewing for you. Um, <clears throat> and Aries. So we're going to look at wherever Aries and Libra are in your chart to understand where this impacts you. And I'll show you how to do that on Tanya's chart. Aries is a fire sign <clears throat> and it's about the individual initiating self-love leadership the spark if you think about fire it gets things going we're moving out of earth and water <clears throat> if you think about earth and water mixing together um <clears throat> and these are polarity energies so anytime we're talking about two points opposite in the zodiac these are opposite points in the energetic picture that pull each other tight and want to stay in balance earth and water energy gets very mucky and murky and it can be hard to see <clears throat> it can be hard to move through fire and air can be very quick. Now there are benefits and downsides to both of those energetic pictures, but <clears throat> just to say that we're going to feel the fire in the air being like inspiration movement, let's go, right? The challenge there is not to, <clears throat> to go full bore 
and burnout. So like, if you think about what a fire can do, if it gets too big, it can burn things. It could burn out and run out of oxygen. It could get outside of its boundaries and cause <clears throat> a forest fire. You know, just think about how it operates in nature. And then that's how we can work with this energy. So we're gonna have fire that we're moving towards and we're gonna have like the self-love of the individual. Now, what we're gonna notice in balance in the South node is Libra, <clears throat> which is all about keeping balance and harmony and justice. So we're gonna be looking for themes of what has been unjust? Where has there been inequality? And we're looking for that balance of how these two support each other. <clears throat> so have we been codependent? Libra has like these codependency themes and it wants to let go and course correct to have healthy, healthy balanced relationships. <clears throat> so we're gonna be releasing um, and like when we're ready, <laughs> letting go of old, old, crusty relationship patterns on all levels of, of humanity and moving towards this inspirational self-love of the individual. And then we want to just be careful to not over course correct. Like my friend Kelly says, like not to go in one ditch or the other. So we don't want to go solidly in the ditch of Aries that says it's all about me and, you know, forget everyone else. And we also want to be careful not to stay really, really stuck <clears throat> in the codependence of Libra. And we want to find that me and we where they complement each other. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna pull up your chart, Tanya. I don't know if you have anything to add or... No, just um, that last sentence you said, the me and the we. Yep. Um, that when you put them together, we, I don't know if you've heard of this. But, no. Um, we, yeah. I, Gosh, I'm forgetting now who I was listening to a few months ago. <clears throat> I think it was Dan Siegel um, has a new book and he's used that term, the moi, of like, <clears throat> you know, where we need to move towards this, like, consciousness um, of this, like, more collaborative Way of being. I love that. Yes, that's what I, I feel we're going to be yeah, showing era for the next 18 months is how we thought that those two things were opposed. And even the way we talk about self-love, you know, like put yourself first. We talk about this to moms, you know, put yourself first. And if you've been a mother, I think you realize that you are also your children and your children are you. And so it's not them or you. It's not put your needs first and then you can take care of those. It's it's the win-win. It's like, how does the taking care of the we support the me? And how does the taking care of the me support the... <clears throat> like? And obviously we can pull too hard on one side or the other. The great thing about that is if you pull too hard on one side, the other side just snaps you back. <clears throat> and so that's what I think mm -hmm. we're all going to be uh, trying to learn about in various ways in our lives. Fascinating. Yeah, I had to Google it. It's and um he wrote a book that just came out, Dr. Dan Siegel called Intraconnected. Intraconnected. I love that. Yes, the interconnectedness of because that's really how nature is, you know, the balance of an ecosystem and humans are part of that. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And I think that it's on the cover, Mui, me plus we as the integration of self identity and belonging. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I feel like I've been, I'm like coming full circle towards something that I've been working through for the last few years, so. Yes, it's like, I think we were sold, we have been sold a myth a bit in these last eras, and I do think it was important for us to just like even get a grip on like, <clears throat> oh, like I'm, you know, each individual can take care of their own needs and they matter. And yet energetically, it's just not the full, it's like not the full picture and it keeps us in the seesaw. If, if I pull really hard over here for just the me and I forget the we, then it snaps back and vice versa. And it keeps us seesawing mm -hmm. and like always what the energy of the planets are. The invitation is to pull tight where there's just enough tension that you can find your own personal sweet spot. And it's often very messy. There are no like <clears throat> quick fixes of like, just put, you know, there are no, if it's, if it can be sad and a cute little like phrase in a quick fix, 
um, yeah, it's probably not the middle point that, yeah, that the energy supports. Can you see your chart okay on here? Yeah, I can. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was going to um, say so something about that. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this in any other calls recently, but it's been something I'm working through hardcore with my sister. It's been a year now since she came to visit and we haven't been speaking for a year. Um, but I had to go to the so far on the me yes. side for my very first time, like yes. ever with her relationship that, you know, I'm just wondering, you know, I'm starting to wonder when is it going to come back into balance, right? It's like, I had to do that, like, completely on one spectrum for a while, to just to try it out to see what will happen in our relationship, because the working in the we area wasn't was it like I, I think I was over I was just over giving for so long that yes. yeah we were out of balance so that's beautiful because I do I think yeah I'm so glad you said that that's right on with like the Libra south note of what we're like trying to release right now is like that <clears throat> like trying and trying and trying to create the we what like we requires participation from everyone involved and um, when we end up needing to pull the other energy is when the we isn't, isn't occurring. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't being participated in. And so, yeah, like, or the opposite, like, <clears throat> yeah, we can just need to go to the other side sometimes. So, you know, until something shifts, that's yeah. So, okay. In your life, this is, this comes up a lot with your sister. Is that right? Um, well, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a lot. This is a, like a very new thing for me to put myself first and just for, for me to do that meant I had to cut off communication. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's new territory for me to be this, what we would say selfish, right? Yeah. It is something that I'm learning through therapy and other things that sometimes in dysfunctional relationships, you have to do, yes. you, know, you have to do an extreme to figure out, you know, how to kind of heal the relationship or move forward. And sometimes it never repairs. Sometimes it's just going to be, that way yes it's a little bit hard for our idealism when we're like hoping and expecting that everyone wants to have this reciprocal mm -hmm. relationship with us it's a little bit hard yeah yeah so i'm still in the thick of that seems really like a really brave journey an intense and brave journey to be going on with a sibling mm -hmm. And like, I'm glad you said that piece as well, because it really is true. Like when we've labeled certain energies, like maybe going more on the Aries side as selfish. Mm -hmm. I think what one thing that astrology teaches us or like the wholeness of the wheel is that it's all coming from the same source. <clears throat> and so sometimes to put yourself first is like the most unselfish or kind thing you could possibly do. I mean, it's all like, mm -hmm however we want to choose to use the language but it's like what if sometimes that's the most loving thing you could do because energetically that's what's being asked of you to bring back the balance into things mm -hmm. and so if we're seeking balance or the universe is seeking to support us in bringing things into wholeness or into the completeness of the wheel and if a relationship is way over here on this side and then it could just be the most loving or just the most true thing even for you yeah that you just step on over here onto the other side and mm -hmm. you say, actually, yeah, I'm over here right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, cool. um, and we've labeled certain actions as like, yeah, selfish or not. And I, oh, it's cool. Mm -hmm. Cause I see that you have like, since you have Saturn and Libra, like a lot of your life lessons are about, are going to be about that and about um, balance, balance and relationships. Justice. Yeah. Yeah, balance and justice in relationships. And um, 
you have Chiron over here in Aries right now. Mm. So I'll show you where, okay, so right now, here's the North Node. You can see that if we look over here, we can see that the North Node is at zero degrees Taurus. That means it's right about to pop in to the later degrees of Aries because it's moving backwards. So it's going, it went to the beginning of Taurus. It's going to move into the later degrees of Aries. It'll go to 29 degrees Aries. Progress all the way back through Aries. And then in 18 months, it'll move into Pisces. So when it does that, you can see right here, it's going to hit, um, yeah, mm. this place right here. Um, I'm, I'll have to look up the transit of what day, but it will eventually make contact with Chiron, which is the wounded healer. I'll be interested to see when that <clears throat> transit's going to happen. That's going to be significant. Um, and yeah. for you, it's really going to be like, because it's you have this, got Pluto, Jupiter, and Saturn over here in the 11th house. Yeah, in Libra. So the south node is going to be coming right here on your Jupiter and Saturn. So activating, so this is going to like bring you some lessons and some completion on some of these lessons because it's the south node. So when you're ready, whenever the time is right over the next 18 months, but I'm suspecting early because it's the early degrees. It's right here at zero and three degrees. You're going to have some completion in these big life lessons that have been a little bit harsh because sometimes Saturn's lessons are like really um, limiting. Mm -hmm. um, so some of these relationship issues are gonna kind of like come to a head and clear up. And then you've got Jupiter right here. So you're gonna have, as those lessons are learned, it's gonna free up a lot of creative energy for you. So it's like that kind of goes in combination like as you kind of have some completion in some of these areas you'll free up some creativity um yeah and have some have some spaciousness and it's really about justice um yeah what is fair leaning into what is fair and what is true to you hmm. or the whole spaciousness thing. sounds good <laughs> That sounds good, right? Yeah, it's gonna like really bring some resolve. Yeah, to these lessons. But um, so Saturn, Saturn isn't um isn't like a soft, mushy teacher. Saturn mm -hmm. is like a a very um it's very serious about our growth and has some very um this might be some of the masculine energy that you're feeling. It has some like mm -hmm. very clear consequence, like um not like punitive, but just like um, cause and effect, you know? So it's like, you get to very clearly see if I continue in this pattern, here's what will happen. That's what it shows you. You know, it's like, it's time to take the glasses off. This is the that Saturn themes is it's time to take the rose colored glasses off and to see, see things for what they are and then to take responsibility for your choices and relationships. And then you will get the result, you will get the rewards from that, from making those hard choices. <clears throat> Hmm. yeah so the south node will be right here it's not pictured on the chart but it's always exactly opposite the north node okay north node will be right here and does the house placement matter too yep yeah so um for you it will be kind of coming into a little bit of your sixth house so first of all the first thing that it's going to activate it's going to be um, your career and on one side, the South Node, so clearing out old ideas about career <laughs> and um, public image and like how you see yourself in the public eye. And then um, your daily routines, how your daily routines support or don't support whatever new shifts you need to make. So how you li literally live your days. Um, and then very shortly after that, um, it will move into like creativity um, and playfulness and self-expression, children. Um, those are all fifth house themes. Hmm. Kind of bringing some light and fire and creativity and playfulness 
And then on the other side, um, on the 11th house, it's going to be about like, um, it's like about humanitarian work, whatever your form of that is, like your service to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how you care about the bigger picture of humanity. Yeah. And how, how, the, how this all plays a part in it, how your creativity, like, it's like, it's like, as you're doing this, um, this work, these hard relationship lessons, and as you get really serious about the truth of what your choices are <laughs> and what the results will be of your choices, as you do that and you free up creative energy, it helps you to get clearer on your service to humanity overall as a whole. Um, fascinating yep so that's the north and south node situation in your in your chart right now so um and then i'll show everybody too and show you the north node natally in your chart like where it was when you were born okay is in leo right here and it's in the ninth house um so that means that you have the south node in aquarius um, in Leo, uh, North Node in Leo is someone who's moving towards being a leader and a teacher of some sort, someone who's like really here <clears throat> to inspire and who's willing to step into being seen a little bit, even when it's hard and that's just an energy that there's no, there's nothing you don't have to like do your North node. Like there's no action you have to take. It's just as you're ready, as the lessons unfold over the course of your whole life, that can just be your guiding star that you're here to bring this loving leadership energy. Hmm. And it's like a little bit of a release of, let's see, what would be releasing in the third house in Aquarius. Aquarius third house might be a little bit more scattered, a little bit all over the place, a little bit um, detached. And yeah, Leo steps into passion and fire and this, yeah, warm loving. It's a, it's a lion energy. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a mama lion. Mm -hmm. yeah I have a I have a special like connection to a lion like spirit animal yeah like saying like, well, I had a vision in a meditation one time about actually feeling like I was a lion like my vision my visual was me in the savanna like I was hunting it was like looking through the eyes of the lion. That's so cool. Wow. Yeah, that's really significant for you. That's your north. Yeah, you're like your north star, like looking through the eyes of the lion. Huh. It's way cool. And as you say that part about the Aquarius, like being scattered, detached. Um, I don't. And as I'm working through my like manifest or aura, like this initiation, yeah. um, I think sometimes and growing up like with a lot of responsibility, I think sometimes my inner child is like, nope, I don't want to be in charge. I don't, I don't want to do that. Like, um, yeah. Yeah, like that word detached or just even the scattered, like yep. being stressed, chaos energy. Yep. Like, like eh, it's too much like informing, I guess, is what I'm supposed to do, right? As my authority yep. is to, I think of it as like, I have to delegate. I just have to like have other people do it kind of energy. Um, yeah, it's like, 
<clears throat> it's kind of like a little bit um Aquarius in the South Node. I mean, it could show up all kinds of ways. So you can tell me, but one way that I can imagine this showing up, this energy is like, like Aquarius have this almost like rebellious spirit about it. Like it needs to, um, yeah, pull back and stay aloof. And it's like, always trying it's a little bit preoccupied with like um yeah thoughts and ideas it's a fra a little bit of a frazzled nervous system um it's a little bit in the head a little bit intellectual mm -hmm. um and then if you think about that and how different that is from that like that um lion who's prowling like that prowling lioness energy that's like focused um and just like mm -hmm. seeing, you know, kind of hiding in the grass and then pouncing and then seeing what what she sees. Um, yeah, it's a little bit of a different energy. And I think that you're going to be really supported in transforming this because when Pluto moves back into Aquarius, which it's going to do in December, it's going to be really close to your south node because so here's yeah so here's the north node in leo right here and then that means the south node in aquarius is right here so you'll have pluto on your south node which is a big transformation and opportunity to <clears throat> release old patterns that like just are like habits that you've just been doing your whole life and it'll be a big like what will you have to let go in order to jump up jump towards the north node and it's funny because it's not that we want um it's like we don't want to eliminate the south node it's like it's where we've been and it's a release point and we need it so you can um always treasure the part of you that has like so many ideas can think so quickly like can be all over the place can multitask can do all these things and yet it's just like your life is gently calling for that like focused lion prowling <laughs> prowling vibe <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. As I was thinking about what you said, moving out of like the Taurus Scorpio energy of like, what do I know about what helps my body mm -hmm. and my nervous system? Right. Mm -hmm. Like learning by the age of, you know, I just had my birthday, 42, I think. <laughs> can't remember yeah 42 you know learning all those things that and you're constantly changing with hormones and this that and the other but like finally understanding like what keeps me grounded so that I can access that lion energy right yes. um, yeah and it's whatever like I feel like for you looking at this it's whatever is that deeper purpose whatever you feel fierce about Mm -hmm. like the line like the mama lion <clears throat> like just so dignified prowling around really clear on what she's hunting down yeah and how, yeah how fierce that is because of a deeper mission and a deeper calling yeah it's like less preoccupied with just the wind blowing of whatever is in the world and it's more it's jumping up you can just see it jumping up to focus mm -hmm whatever a deeper a deeper calling is in your family um yeah work yeah well it's in it's going back to schooling I mean I left teaching because I thought it was something I didn't want to be there anymore I didn't want to be in that environment anymore um but it was that environment that I didn't want to be in. It isn't the purpose of child advocacy and, yes. um, you know, education reform and, yes. and all the things like, yeah, it's just very, oh, someone's calling. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that. Oh. Um, yeah, and 
like I said, I think I said in the beginning of the call was that in the last, you know, four or five years, I've had to really dive deep into um, kind of the shadow side of me and like the Scorpio energy, the spirituality, yep. like reconnect to my purpose mm -hmm. and understand that it's not going to happen in public school. Mm -hmm. And I knew that, I knew that already, but I had to come out of it full circle to come back and be like, um, because I tried homeschooling and all that. It's like, that isn't for me. That isn't for my family, but starting my own school is. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm ready to do that. And that so I wasn't ready to do that before. I had to, I had to go through my own transformation and because of my three, five, right? <laughs> like yeah. I have to trial and error so much. Yes. Oh, that makes so much sense though, because this is like, <clears throat> when the north node shifts right over here yeah it's in the 11th house like 11th house is about okay so like humanitarianism community service community mm -hmm. so you're going to be drawing together community and your north node being in the ninth house too yeah okay the ninth house is about philosophies and education as well so that's like a space that you're you're moving towards your north node in this way yeah moving towards being a leader in themes of education that's pretty cool well it's exciting but it's also really freaking scary yes, it's, <laughs> but, yes. and the whole um the part in human design about the manifester and the yeah. having creative urges versus ideas and what you said earlier about you know Aquarius energies lots of ideas lots of ideas lots of ideas and sometimes I would just keep following them keep following yeah. them, keep following them and um I think it was something you said about like now understanding like you know that lessons life lessons right like don't yeah. follow all the ideas yes creative urges feel different to me like I can't yeah. actually wake up like wanting to do it like yes yeah, stop thinking about the steps that I need to do yes. and that's when you'll have the energy right the energy yeah. for it mm -hmm. energy to do it myself rather than saying like who can I get to do this for me <laughs> like yes. I don't want to do that this oh, idea like, is someone else's idea yeah yeah and I think that's been so cool to watch you go through that progression I remember you saying for a long time now like I don't have the energy to do these things I have ideas for and I didn't quite get until this very moment it was like oh yeah it's because this other this other urge wasn't here yet do you think that's true yeah and there's something about like the rest cycle you know you have to rest to be able to actually come to your next creative urge yeah. so if I I'm not, I wasn't rest fully resting yeah um yeah like I just and when you're coaching right I'm bombarded with everybody else's ideas so it was re it's really hard for me to understand like is this my idea or is this the other person's idea to go forward with right mm -hmm. so um yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. I, that's that makes so much sense and like Aquarius yeah down in your south node and thinking about you being a third line where it's like it seems like you do have to kind of bump into the energy a little bit to to get a feel for it you know like bumping into burnout or whatever it may be with those ideas mm -hmm. enough times to get clear and now you have like yeah, I can almost feel this in you of like now you have this feeling. Of I'm Tanya. Okay. I'm Tanner's way. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I heard. I heard the. I'm on a call. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I'm not usually working in here. Busted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, busted. <laughs> busted talking about weird things in the state park office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, 
That's awesome. Yeah, the security officer. That was amazing. Um, and one I haven't really met yet. I think he's met my kids, but not me. <laughs> Who are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love this for you. I can see it. I can feel it, how it's like clarifying in your embodied experience what a real urge or not. I don't want to say real, but like what a deep, deep urge is really feels like in your body versus just chasing. Yeah. Yes. It's really cool. Yeah, I think, and you know, as an embodiment coach, mindfulness coach, like uh, we all have like levels of unconsciousness that we're we're going through, and yep. um, you know, this is my sick coming up on my sixth year of my mom's death, mm -hmm. and I went into such an, a time of disembodiment that yeah. I've, I've had to come like through a lot of body healing and yeah work on my um emotional like intelligence and things that I had repressed and all this stuff so just learning things that I didn't know like being able to understand my body understand mm -hmm. my urges understand um all of that yeah I've had to learn I've had to like really dive deep yeah. to figure out what's mine and what's someone else's in relationship yeah wow that's amazing because I just see you doing it like I see you live in the lessons that you came here you know that I see in your chart that you came here to do and you're learning them and that's mm. so cool yeah wow it's really it's really neat just to see the energy and to hear your lived experience lining up with what's here for you yeah, yeah I'm, I'm super very, grateful. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna say I think it's really supported what you're doing right now. Yeah, the energy is really there. It's really, yeah. it's really supported. Yeah, it's been mucky. I've felt that mucky muck, the earth and the water that you're talking yeah. about, the Taurus and the Scorpio. Like I was going through that yeah. muck <laughs> for the last eighteen months, right? Um. And yeah, I definitely feel that fire and air like shift. Yes. That like get moving <laughs> again. Like I was, I felt like I was really actually stuck in the mud. <laughs> like, yeah. I was, like, yeah. I think, I think it's going to cut through the muck a little bit. It's, I mean, for everyone, but especially for you, because you've got this Saturn and Jupiter expansion and creative energy mm -hmm. through like, through like this cut through the muck with clarity energy that the more yeah Saturn just like the more you get like um firm in mm -hmm. your being yeah that's that's I, th I think that might be at least one aspect of that masculine energy that you're feeling called forth in you because it's very supported right now for you to like cut the cut the excess cut the nonsense so to speak yeah yeah gosh pure joy um coach certification was like life-changing so still you know still going through the different steps in the coaching process in the parenting pause class but like yeah. boundaries you know boundary setting yes. and um values like getting to know being solid in your values right like these are mine. Not everybody has to believe them. And we're seeing this so, like, it's so divisive in our, in our country right now that, you know, everybody's got to believe what I believe, or you don't believe you're over there. And we can be solid in our beliefs and our values without having to change other people's minds. <laughs> right. And that, I think yes. that's what I've come to realize recently is like, okay, I can start a school doesn't mean it's for everybody and it doesn't mean I have to change your mind like this is what my kids are doing right and as an as a homeschool mom you have had yeah. to go, go through some of this like this is yeah. what works for us and I'm not saying it has to work for you but um 
that humanitarian part of me also had to be like, I can't save everybody. Yes. <laughs> I just can't do it. Yes. <laughs> Which is like uh, why I was in public school. It was like everybody, yes. you know, so. Yes. And it's like you, it's like, yeah, South Node and Aquarius. It's like you've been there in that energy of humanitarianism and saving everyone save the world, save the community. And you've lived those lessons. And now you're ready to move, <laughs> move into that, into that North node Leo, which is like, here's where it's, I'm just thinking of the lines. So that's why I'm doing this. Like, here's <laughs> where I'm going. like, here's where I'm going. I'm, I'm tracking something down for my like pride of people. And then people want to follow. Cool. You know, it's like more of that vibe. It's like, yeah, it's more like, if you want to follow where I'm going, yeah which fits, which fits for a manifester too right yeah it's like just letting people know you know because I think informing in this like shadow side of Aquarius would be like I've got to like let everyone know so everyone can be happy and everyone can be okay and it's informing in the north node and Leo I'm just visualizing it being more like here's where I'm going here's where you can find me here's mm -hmm. where you know like you could come along if you want to like a little bit more of that yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> oh so helpful mm -hmm. yeah all of your guidance and yeah it's helpful to know sometimes like um yeah where we've been where the energy's been where it's headed where it's supported you know yeah for this last few minutes maybe um we can take the chart down and we can talk about yep. so the the class that I'm just I just want to say like I'm grateful for the class you just did on yeah. human design because I mentioned it a few times throughout this call of just learning um you know, the, the centers, we went yeah. through all the centers in your course and understanding which ones were defined and undefined in myself. Yeah. Um, and then in my family members, especially. And now I want to know like everybody in my life, like, you know, and every relationship um, that that course was really beneficial to me to get to know my own body design. Yeah. and trust and just build trust with myself and yeah. what, what messages I'm getting yeah so yeah yeah that's been my experience too and um it was pretty awesome to watch like everyone kind of take hold of that knowledge for themselves and to expand on it and find ways I feel like we built we built that <laughs> class together based on everyone's Mm -hmm. embodied experience and that was kind of my curiosity in starting it was like can people take a little bit of knowledge about the energy centers in the body and use it right away to find out like to have a better relationship with the messages that you're getting in your body and I think that people um yeah really showed us that they can and that was pretty inspiring to me so yeah, I really appreciate you being in there you were a leader in that group and I really appreciate it yeah and so supportive to me to learn like the different gates as well and you had like what I would consider affirmations like to use yeah. like yeah which helped me to just guide myself back to the part of my body that might feel like imbalance yep um and oftentimes my body consciousness will show me like like my throat, you know, is uh -huh. feeling something and I can use, you know, some sort of affirmation or um, an, like a somatic practice of some kind to just move that uh -huh. energy. Like I woke up the other day, like, I need to sing. <laughs> like, yes. ah, something needs to come out. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. Well, you've been a big initiator for me in all these steps and in, including um that course and so it's cool to 
just kind of like I like seeing I think our friendship is a good example of just how it can how like we can help each other on a very energetic level it's not like we're trying or forcing anything it's just like you literally just keep bringing me to the next step I'm like okay and then um I walk through it so I'm always like excited to yeah just get around you and see what's next and I I guess one curiosity that I have is like I don't really know because I'm trying to I like well I'm not even trying I have to be in response to have the energy for something and I'm curious what's next if it's just like that same thing only more in depth you know or if it's like where do we, where do we study next or do we go to oh, the your next, next the next part of the course yeah the I'm really two. curious yeah and I'm kind of like yeah waiting a little bit for it to show itself either through a person or something else of like do we just take that same thing and and go more in depth with it or do we study the gates more in depth um yeah I'm trying to think of what questions I had coming up next yeah like where where would your curiosity have gone next or what you would have um you don't have to answer now but that's what I'm curious about is like what um because just I think that's kind of like the nature of being like a manifesting generator and then I have that defined ego and it's like I just want to go where the need is I don't really want to just poof something out of thin air just for myself because I don't seem motivated for that so it's just like I'm happy to wait until there's a yeah I think (laughs) um well I think also with time so this is what I've been trying to figure out too it's time like you just said I kind of initiated you into this course, but it took like a year and a half, right? Of like doing things together. I didn't know what it was either. I was like, let's just do this. Let's do that. Let's do this. And then poof, you were like, I have a course. (laughs) Yeah. And I don't even know if I even told you how you initiated me into it because it was like, I can't even remember. Like we were having a podcast conversation or something. And one of the guests, maybe it was Nina was on there and Mm -hmm. Or like talking about how yeah I just became interested in this idea of like safe seating all the energy centers mm-hmm. in the body and the not self themes and then Nina was like well do you teach human design I was like yes I do now I do <laughs> yes I do <laughs> in this moment I do and that's kind of a cool it, it was a really cool example to me just like how you're saying like you didn't really get urges you know like I think for like months to years we can kind of understand this concept and then something happens where it lands in our bodies we're like yeah. that's it and I think that that was an experience for me of understanding really operating in response um and so we can always put I could always push something out um but yeah and the reason <laughs> the reason I said with time is that I think you had put out a questionnaire or feedback form yes but I don't know if I ever filled it out so I think resending it yeah would be helpful yeah um, because with time, like, time. With time, you know, with, with age, people are like, oh yeah, I do have something to say now, <laughs> you know? So yes, that's a good idea with time. Well, and I just think that that's so cool that like, that's how the energy works on its own time frame, And it's not like on, it's not on the time frame that we think in our minds that it should be. Yeah. 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 And I'm just still working with that because like I said, I, feel like sometimes I I feel the transits coming way before they're coming Uh and then also this this like oh this was Leah's idea this whole time I was trying to I was trying to do these things or like have these classes and like it wasn't mine to have it was yours to take over and make (laughs) you know so um but yeah, I see this vision for Ohm and the Home Revolution, where it's like lots of different teachings coming and going and spiritual practices and somatic practices and things that just keeps building in there. It's like a school, isn't it? Yeah. Which is right now, it's like a school, like you're making different types of schools. Maybe that's one of your schools. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, I had that. I had that thought because when I first did, I was like, oh, it's like school for parents. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not like a lot of parenting information it's more of it's unschooling for parents <laughs> yeah, that's what it is it is and I actually thought about changing the name to <laughs> unschooling for parents and mm-hmm. it probably does need a new sales page that says more of what's in there now but 
I've been through this experimental process with it. You know, what's kind of cool that I'm starting to realize is like, I don't know, you know, like, at least for me in my body or when the way that energy moves for me is like, um, what we really get conditioned into is that like, we got to get the sales page and all dialed in and we got to get the, um, name all dialed in we gotta get all these things right and what I noticed is like when the energy is there that it doesn't really matter super much like I don't know how perfect all that is it's like the energy comes and then all of the details fall into place or they don't yeah and yeah and sometimes I think when at least for me when I'm working so hard I'm perfecting the details it's because the energy is not really there for it fully yeah, but maybe like I love I'm gonna really hold on to this piece that you said where it's like we well, are feeling what's coming. Yeah. But you can't really miss it when it's there. Yeah, I know. Like you said, it gets you out of bed each morning so, if you want to go towards one of the worst things is like having my own ability to go into my website and like change things because it's like yeah. no, stop changing things. <laughs> Just because yeah. it's like, it's like this little idea to change it. It's like idea. Yeah. See, there you go. Yeah. But Jill, when you know, you know. Yeah. yeah. So now, yeah, now I'm ready to, yeah, there's a major shift with that program that it's now a dollar for the first month so that I can have people in there experimenting and giving feedback because that's, and it's for a revolution to unpack, like, unschool ourselves so it's gonna be like lots of people just in there so that's so cool and I love that you allow that like third line process of you just let it unfold and evolve yeah because each course I made mm -hmm. you know it had as it its own entity with yeah. its own group process and now it's merging all yeah and like how could you how could you get there if you hadn't done all of that yeah all that experimenting and yeah yeah. And of course the last one is branding from home. So it's, it's all about branding myself. I didn't know what my brand was until I started doing it. So it's like, you know, you just have to go out there and put yourself out there to start understanding what you're offering. Yeah. And you show us that third line energy really well. I really, I learned a lot about third line energy that you're really willing to say. I think that's a really unique take um that it's hot it's new in the world in a way to say like oh branding what's branding in a third line way it's like feeling your way in and finding out what your brand is through trial and error I think that's really brave and you show us that in all the areas that you're in of like oh maybe the way to learn things for some people is through just go, going into the energy first and letting it tell you what's what's there I think that's really cool it's not everybody's process but right third yeah. lines and it is that unschooling piece yep. that, and being a preschool teacher for so long that yeah I had to I had to unschool myself because mm -hmm. I you know I went through traditional schooling college master's degree I did choose um a school that didn't require testing in my, my master's degree. Cause I knew that about myself. Like yeah. I don't want to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've, I've definitely had to unschool a lot too, to get to embrace the line three. Yeah. It's like the journey. Yeah. The journey and not just the destination. Yep. The process, not the product. Yeah. The process, which is a big deal for third lines and it's not. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I love about preschool. It's a process. They don't care about the product of anything, right? Like they just want to do this stuff, just be yeah. so. Ooh, that's really cool. Like what's it like to be a third line manifester, right? If like your urges are about a pro just engaging in a process. Yeah. Even deconditioning, like what an urge has to be. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a product. It's like a, I feel an urge to start a school. And so now here you are in this process. Yeah. And what, what scares me and holds me back is that I know I won't have the energy forever that I need other people to yep. carry it on. And yep. so that's why sometimes I don't start something. I don't initiate something, yep. but that's kept me really small in life, yep. really like held down. 
Yeah. Um, and just not trusting like that other people will show up and carry it. Wow. Well, and like, that is hard because of like, we see the cycle of wholeness and completion, but we each just get to do our part. It's challenging to let go of the narrative that we have to do the whole picture. Mm -hmm. But like, if, if what you birth into the world and what you initiate is meant to be picked up and carried forward or, you know, yeah, the energy is there for it in others. If others have a response to it, then they will. And then if they don't, yeah, then it won't. It, it's what's funny is <laughs> I have to initiate Tanner, my husband. Yeah. Um, it takes a while. He's, he's a Capricorn. He's very like, he's a generator. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I, it takes a while for him to get on board with my yeah. initiation. So yeah. he, yeah, I think it, it was a good match. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say that. But he, he can withstand the energy. Like he can hold, hold it long-term. Yeah. So it's just getting him on board that yes. takes some time. Sometimes we I'm have so to, far ahead. Yeah. Sometimes we have to see you out there, you know? before we get on board with it like I I can think of times when I don't, like I don't quite know what you're talking about but I'm gonna follow you like, I'll, <laughs> I'll see you when I get there you know so <laughs> sometimes it's a while are you ready for me sweet girl yeah, yeah. Sure. okay we have to call. yeah we could talk forever we went past our <laughs> hour <laughs> we just keep going <laughs> All right. So I will put your links in the, in like the show notes for your Instagram and all that for people great. to follow along with you. Sounds and great. we'll get together another time. And then in the future, whenever we decide it's time okay. to talk again. Sounds good. Thank you. Bye. Bye.